Attacks on the United States. A nation grapples with the horror that life may never be the same again. And while officials conduct a global manhunt for those involved in the devastating terror. He was an exemplary human being. He was a, a hero long before this happened. And he was a hero to our entire family. And relatives share the pain of the loved ones they have lost. Hello, I'm Relita Vasilova. And I'm Jonathan Mann at the CNN Center. This is CNN's continuing coverage of America under attack. More details are emerging as the massive investigation of the attacks in New York and Washington proceeds. Law enforcement sources are saying as many as 50 people may have been involved in the planning and execution of the attacks. The FBI is assuming between 12 and 14 hijackers were involved. On a tip from the FBI, German police searched an apartment in Hamburg where two men believed to be linked to the attacks used to live. Police also detained several people for questioning. Earlier, the FBI swarmed into a Boston hotel, taking several people there into custody for questioning. And in Florida, investigators are looking through documents, home computers, and flight school records. Officials believe some of the hijackers received flight training in Florida. As rescue workers search for survivors and victims, New York authorities were briefly distracted by a bomb scare at the Empire State Building a few hours ago. Authorities, or rather thousands of people, were evacuated from the building and surrounding streets, but it turned out to be a false alarm. Meanwhile, the grim work continued at the site of New York's once proud Twin Towers. Only five survivors were rescued Wednesday. One New York City firefighter says emergency workers have to be prepared for the worst. It's a lot of devastation, uh, you know, but we have to deal with it. It's something that we have to do. I mean, nobody really prepares for anything on, on this kind of scale. And, uh, you know, every news you hear is just more and more bad news. New York Governor George Pataki and U.S. Senators Charles Schumer and Hillary Rodham Clinton joined New York Mayor Rudy Giuliani as he pledged to rebuild the World Trade Center. We have to all work together now and work together to make sure that we save as many lives as possible rescue the people that we can rescue and rebuild the city of New York and the World Trade Center to be even greater and more wonderful and more beautiful than it was before. We're going to show the rest of the nation, we're going to show the rest of the world uh, that the New Yorkers are not intimidated by terrorism, that we don't surrender to this type of cowardly act, but we will come back stronger than ever. For his part, U.S. President George W. Bush visited the scene of the attack on the Pentagon. He said he was overwhelmed by the devastation. Coming here uh, makes me sad on the one hand. It also makes me angry. And uh, we, uh, our country will, however, not be cowed by terrorists, by people who don't share the same values we share, by people who, uh, who uh, are willing to destroy people's lives. The United States says it wants to form a coalition to not only find those responsible for these attacks, but to root out and eliminate terrorism as a whole. We're building a strong coalition to go after these perpetrators, but more broadly, to go after terrorism wherever we find it in the world. It's a scourge not only against the United States, but against civilization, and it must be brought to an end. U.S. officials acknowledge the rules of engagement have changed. We are, in a sense, seeing the definition of a, of a new battlefield uh, in the world, a 20th, 21st century battlefield, and uh, it is a different kind of conflict. It is uh, something that is not unique to this century, to be sure, but it is, uh, given our geography and given our circumstance, it is, uh, in, a, in a major sense, new for this country. President Bush and his top aides spent much of Wednesday lining up international support for a U.S. response to the attacks. Much of that support was forthcoming. At an emergency meeting in Brussels, NATO made a decision that could pave the way for a collective response to the carnage. On September the 12th, the North Atlantic Council met again in response to the appalling attacks perpetrated yesterday 
against the United States of America. The Council agreed that if it, is, if it is determined that this attack was directed from abroad against the United States, it shall be regarded as an action covered by Article 5 of the Washington Treaty, which states that an armed attack against one or more of the Allies in Europe or in North America shall be considered an attack against them all. NATO's decision opens the way for the first use in the 52 history, 52 year history rather, of the alliance of a provision stating, as we've just heard, an attack on one NATO state is an attack against everyone. U.S. stock markets will remain closed Thursday. New York Stock Exchange Chairman Richard Grasso says the exchange will open no later than Monday, though. The stock market shutdown is the longest since the outbreak of World War I. It kept markets closed from July to November of 1914. Meanwhile, the Federal Aviation Administration allowed a limited number of commercial flights Wednesday, this after the grounding of the entire U.S. commercial fleet Tuesday. The U.S. Transportation Secretary said most flights diverted on Tuesday could finish their routes as soon as airports meet tough new security measures. In New York, a scene of unimaginable devastation. A city famous for its vitality and confidence is dazed and somber. From above the wafting smoke of lower Manhattan, we're joined now by Garrick Utley. Garrick. Yes, uh, good morning again, uh, really. It's uh, here in New York. Um, a question about um, a rather strange scene, perhaps, on Tuesday morning down here in lower Manhattan, just after that uh, plane flew into the uh, North Tower of the World Trade Center. The unusual sight for most people was this. As streams of workers in the tower were trying to race out into the streets to save themselves from the flames, others were racing in. Who were they? Well, the answer is clearly they're members of the New York City Fire Department, men and women, racing in, climbing the stairs, not only to fight the fire, which was so far up in the building they probably couldn't reach it quickly, but to evacuate as many people as possible. Why do they do that, these firemen and firewomen? And we know the bottom line on this, the human cost of it, approximately 300 members of the New York City Fire Department have been lost. We want to take a a moment right now to hear from two of them, a fireman and a firewoman. Uh, for about the past 10 years, Amy and I have been working together as a documentary film crew, and we specialize in the, the emergency services. Oh, they'll have to pump you know, millions of gallons of water onto this fire in order to put it out. It's the worst type of fire to put out because it's so deeply seated. The overwhelming smell of the fire is that of burning electrical wires. You inhale it, and, and I don't even know how to describe the, the stench. It's filth and it's degradation. I don't know what the overall damage would be on a person's lungs if they were out there working in it every day. We're still uh, in the midst of trying to put the fires out and uh, get people. It appears to have been a pancake collapse, which is floor upon floor upon floor falling on top of each other all the way down. The fire was burning so hot when it hit the upper floors that it actually melted and the structure just came down on top of itself. Building number five is probably going to come down completely within the next couple of days, I would imagine. Uh, as it settles and as it uh, 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 comes tumbling down, it, it begins to make noises as if the building is crying. The various moans that the building makes as the steel buckles and, and the bricks begin to collapse. Seeing the firefighters all sitting in a row lined up along the curb coming out from building five when we left. Um, they were filthy. They were exhausted. They were emotionally wrought. There is a lot of danger. None of our firefighting training encompasses acts of war. So we need to be very careful. Firefighters, law enforcement, paramedics, we are the first responders on any terrorism incident here in the United States. It's not the military. And we need to begin thinking like the military thinks. And to have 300 of our brothers and sisters perish in a single incident is something that we can't even fathom. It'll be years, years before uh, these firefighters will be able to go back to work and, and, and with the same attitude that they had before. 
By the way, the building number five the firefighters were referring to is a five World Trade Plaza. That's a nine-story building, which was also damaged and was burning. And as you heard, they're afraid that it may come tumbling down, too. Let's get some more insights as to the rescue operation currently underway, what is actually happening there, what it is like to be uh, involved in that operation from a volunteer, Kevin McGarry, who has been on the scene working, is with us by telephone. Kevin, good evening, or good morning, I should say. Tell us a bit about what you've been doing down there in Lower Manhattan? Well, I'd spent about 15 hours in Lower Manhattan uh, from early this morning until about 10 p.m. this evening uh, in the rescue efforts and uh, recovering bodies. Uh, primarily huh. bodies, there's, uh, I didn't see any uh, anyone alive in the 15 hours I was there, although I was able to assist in the rescue of uh, approximately six uh, bodies and a lot of body parts. It must be pretty grim, very difficult uh, under these circumstances. I think all of us can understand that and, and, and really appreciate what you and your colleagues are doing. Tell us a bit about what your colleagues, your fellow workers are saying. I mean, how much optimism, how much hope do they hold out when you're confronted with that rubble, that mountain of rubble? The, the, the mountain of rubble is unfortunately being sifted through by the handful. Down deep inside of three, four stories down below into the garage area, we're removing the debris by hand into five gallon buckets, handing them up and being dumped and sifted through a second time, looking for any sign of body parts or jewelry, watches, any type of wallets, identification, anything at all. Um, you said you said, Kevin, that you took part in the, in the recovery of six uh, people who were lost there. Any indication as to other um, dead that have been recovered, as to how many uh, have been found uh, in the at, last several hours? At the, the last body that I had carried to the uh, morgue area, which was a uh, semi-trailer, uh, was approximately 20 some odd bodies in there at that time, and that was at 10 p.m. And what is the mood among the workers there as, as very, to prospects very, of very, finding more? Very high. Everyone has the hopes of finding yet another survivor. They're digging deep and they're, they're digging hard, looking. But again, it's being done by hand. The iron workers that are working in there are working to remove the steel, of which is on top of a lot of the bodies. Uh, we're sifting through the, the debris, a lot of the body parts and the debris are one and the same. Uh, it's just becoming, right now at this point, foul. The smell is starting to come from the, you know, from the dead. Uh, so the bodies, the, the bodies are a little bit easier to identify at this point. Uh, although it's going to be a long, long process, months. Kevin, are you going to go back in there again? I, I'll be back in there tomorrow. I will be back in there as long as as long as they need help. I'll be back in there. Kevin McGarry Thank on you. the scene. Thank you very much for sharing uh, what you've been through and your colleagues down there and the rescue teams have been through. Let's go down to Lower Manhattan near that site that Kevin was talking about to CNN's Alessandro Vinci. Alessandro, what are you seeing from your perspective right now? Well, Gary seems incredible by the end, and yet uh, there are many incredible things about this story. More than 40 hours after those two hijacked planes hit the uh, World Trade Center, the two towers, uh, and then they collapsed, uh, there are still uh, smoke coming out of the debris of those two collapsing uh, towers, a high uh, uh, pillowing, billowing, a big cloud of white smoke billowing on top of those uh, rubbles, and an indication how difficult we heard one of the uh, volunteers there telling us how difficult the operation is going on down there. The fact that still the, the debris, the, the iron and the metals are still smoldering, certainly making that effort even more uh, difficult. We spent some time earlier on on the ground there where hundreds of rescue uh, workers, uh, some of the paramedics and the police officers are all involved in that rescue operation. We saw uh, a couple of re re uh, refrigerator trucks there, probably trying to take some of the body parts, some of the bodies that have been uh, re recovered uh, back to the morgue and of course also a long line of uh, dumpster trucks uh, bringing out some of the rubble that, was, uh, uh, that has been put on those dumpster uh, trucks to make some room for more trucks to come in. We understand so far more than 3,000 tons of rubble has been removed from uh, the, uh, the site. Earlier on, uh, mayor, the New York mayor, Rudolph Giuliani, said that 82 bodies had already been recovered. That number perhaps a bit uh, higher now uh, since the uh, recovery.